How is up, y'all? It's Pop Bulls Cracking. It's Steve Buster Reacting to this video by RRG. It's titled The Freaky Parties That Destroyed the Lakers Showtime Era and Magic Johnson's Career. Freaky Parties. There have been freak offs before, did he? Apparently. I mean, I'm not surprised. I feel like a lot of these celebrities have been involved in some weird activity for a very long time now. Uh, but I guess we get some tea about what happened back then. Let's watch. Irvin Magic Johnson was selected as the Los Angeles Lakers' number one pick in the 1979 NBA draft. Oh, as he packed up and left his hometown of Lansing, Michigan, he also left behind two separate paternity lawsuits in Ingham County Circuit Court and his on-again, off-again girlfriend, oh. Cookie. Yeah. He headed west with a sorority girl he was cheating on Cookie with, and they lived happily ever after. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Magic was at the forefront of the Lakers' Showtime era, an exciting time in professional sports. The team played a run-and-gun style of basketball. During the team's heyday, the Lakers won five championships and dominated the league. And here's the man of the hour, Magic Johnson. Magic, uh, what do you have that makes you perform like this in these championship games? Well, I don't know. It's just, I love to win. But away from the court, he wasn't worried about dribbling basketballs. Instead, he was making cheeks bounce as he ran through countless groupies. <laughs> he became known for his wild and raunchy parties. And his teammate, Frank Burkowski, said it best. If you ever die and go to heaven, you want heaven to be Magic's house parties. In today's video, Ooh. we'll be discussing one of the most successful yet dysfunctional oh, franchises yeah, he got in sports HIV. history. Oh. And the devastating diagnosis oh, that brought yeah. his basketball career to a screeching halt. Before we jump into today's video, Elda named Magic dumped the sorority girl he moved out to LA with and got back with Cookie. He and Cookie broke up numerous times, but during the break, he fathered a child named Andre in 1981 with his sister's best friend. Pat Riley was promoted to head coach in 1981, and from that point on, he had some strict rules for the Lakers' wives and girlfriends. According to GQ magazine, Pat held a team dinner and the players brought their significant others. Pat gave a pep talk about everyone's roles in winning a championship. The men were required to focus on basketball and only basketball. And as for the women, Pat told them their job was to alleviate any burdens the men had from taking on all of the child rearing duties and making sure the men were well fed and well taken care of. There was also an unspoken rule. What happens on the road stays on the road. In other words, the women were expected to turn a blind eye, don't ask too many questions, and enjoy the perks of being with an athlete on one of the league's oh, top is. teams. Magic was like a kid in a candy store. The Washington Post reported he would find the finest women in LA and would give them free courtside tickets so they could cheer him on at home games. Miguel Nunez, who was an aspiring actor at the time, was instructed by the team's owner, Jerry Buss, to scour the stands, looking for the most beautiful women, to give post-game passes to the arena's sexy restaurant and lounge called The Forum Club. In a memoir about the Showtime era, the writer stated that some of the bartenders worked as substance dealers and the players' wives were rarely permitted inside. On nights when a player's family attended the game, he had to skip the Forum Club and head home instead. The club was packed with players, staff, select high-end season ticket holders, celebrities, and the hottest women in town. During away games, Magic didn't hesitate to pay for airline tickets and hotel rooms so his lady friends could join him out on the road. In a book about the Lakers' Showtime era, it was noted that there would always be multiple women waiting for him in every new city. Magic would allegedly sleep with the women and then immediately tell them to get to stepping. Even if he tried, he just couldn't get away from women. Author Roland Lazenby claimed that after games, Magic would retreat to the team sauna, where a woman, or sometimes multiple women, would be waiting for him. Sometimes other teammates would be in there as well. Magic would get down to business, sometimes multiple times, before putting on his robe and calmly walking back into the locker room to conduct his post-game interviews. Finding women while on the road was even easier. The players for the home team would just pass them the phone numbers of the local beautiful women. According to the LA Times, most of the athletes referred to the women as groupies, but the Laker players called them freaks. One of the team's security guards stated, there were teams of whores and Magic was the biggest whore. He loved women, two, three at a time. 
Magic's agent, Lon Rosen, told the Washington Post that he was concerned about Magic's promiscuity, especially after he fathered his eldest son out of wedlock. Lon said, I told him, you have to be careful. Your career and everything is before you. People don't want you knocking up their sisters and daughters. Your image is important. Was he able to slow Magic down? Not at all. Magic was having too much fun and once admitted that he knocked down six women at one time. Now you just being nasty as hell for no reason. Now that it just don't make no sense at all. It wasn't just the players who were getting it in. The team's owner, Jerry Buss, who was in his 50s at the time, was known for parading around LA with barely legal women. As Magic's popularity grew in the City of Angels, so did his parties, which meant he needed a bigger home to accommodate all of his guests. Magic lived in one of Jerry's apartment complexes for the first few years of his professional career before moving into a 9,000 square foot Bel Air mansion. The home had a swimming pool, hot tub, a sauna, a bar, an indoor racquetball court, a home theater, and a huge backyard. The one feature that attracted Magic to the home was the stereo system, which would play all of his favorite songs throughout the 18 rooms of the house. Oh, and of course, there was plenty of room for women. Lots and lots of women. And he had strict criteria for female guests. They had to be gorgeous. They had to be wearing little to no clothing. And they had to be willing to do anything and everything. His teammate, Frank Verkowski, said, If you were a guy, at midnight, you'd get as close as you could to the hottest possible woman. Magic went around in this freaky, voyeuristic way. He'd check on you. He'd order people to start doing things. All you had to be was near a chick. There were guys who would yell, Magic, she's not getting busy. Magic would run over and the woman would start getting busy. What? Okay. His home wasn't awesome. the only place Magic was having the time of his life. Sometimes his lady friends would accompany him on short trips to Hawaii and the Bahamas. Magic would take care of all of the flights and the hotel accommodations because there was no way he would allow any of his women to spend the night. In his memoir, he said he always explained to women that he preferred sleeping alone. He added, no matter what happened between us, I would be asking her to leave when it was over. Damn. He and Cookie broke up numerous times, and he even canceled a couple of their weddings. But finally, in September 1991, they walked good. down the aisle and became husband and wife. Three months later, Not while Cookie was pregnant with their son, EJ, Magic was diagnosed with HIV. Cookie decided she was gonna stick beside him. Because of the uh, HIV virus that I have attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers. Uh, today. I'm going to go on, I'm going to beat it, and I'm going to have fun. He retired at the age of 32 immediately upon receiving the diagnosis, bringing the Showtime era to an end. Magic briefly returned in 1995 for one season. Cookie and their son EJ, who was born in June 1992, were given a... I did not know he got this disease when he was married or with a long... So you were out here sleeping with all these women unprotected and you had a woman? A clean bill of health. Due to the lack of medical advancements, they decided it was too risky to conceive a second child. So they adopted a baby girl named Elisa, who was born in 1994. Magic to the LA Times, he called five of his closest friends to tell them about his diagnosis. Arsenio Hall, his former coach, Pat Riley, Larry Bird, Isaiah Thomas, and Michael Jordan. Magic said, This is why Jordan didn't want to take, he didn't want to, he didn't want none of this bullshit. I saw the, uh, uh, the documentary <laughs> about the Bulls. Listen, much respect to that man. When they were partaking in this debauchery and drugs and partying and all this shit, Michael Jordan was like, nah, keep that bullshit away from me. I'm here to play. I'm here to focus. And that's why he was the greatest. Because he prioritized the game. And y'all was out here bullshitting. Larry cried. So did Arsenio. Isaiah just didn't want to believe it. Pat and Michael listened in stunned silence. People who knew about Magic's lifestyle were surprised by the diagnosis. At the time, there was still a stigma attached to the virus, with many believing it could only be acquired through homosexual sex. Naturally, questions about Magic's preference also became a topic of discussion. I think sometimes we think, well, only gay people can get it, only 
uh, well, it's not going to happen to me. And here I am saying that it can happen to anybody. He remained adamant that he only had relations with women, although he wasn't sure which of his partners infected him. That didn't satisfy the media. I will say, I'm not saying this is the case with him at all, but I will say from what I have seen with other people, <laughs> some, some men who are really promiscuous and they're just fucking all these different women and they just cannot stay loyal to save their lives. Some of them be, be gay low key and they be trying to fuck the gay way. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's a very common thing where they are trying to fuck is men. They're trying to convince themselves and their penis that it's straight, you know? And it's like, no, you like what you like. And they obviously are bisexual, so they like women as well. But I feel like they be trying to fuck so many women because it's like, oh, I need to be only with women. I don't want to be gay. I don't like this. I don't like that I like penis. But, you know, they 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 do. And then that sometimes they dabble in, you know, the the anus wars. <laughs> Sorry, that's disgusting. <laughs> that's just a disgusting terror. I don't know why that just came to my head. Anyway, sometimes they dabble and they deal with men. But, you know, when they're with women, they just want to fuck all these women because they don't want to be gay they usually are ashamed some of the bisexual men who are down low though they were convinced that magic was sticking his dangling in everybody's holes rumors persisted that he was bisexual with several papers even citing his friend isaiah thomas as the source of the allegations in retaliation for spreading the rumor magic admitted in a book he co-authored with larry bird that he helped get isaiah banned from the 1992 u.s olympic dream team from there, Magic became more graphic about his escapades with women in what many saw as an attempt to further dispel rumors about his sexuality. Well, According that? to LA Mag, Magic talked about how women hounded him at all hours of the day. They would sneak past security guards to get next to him and would flood his mail with pictures, videos, and panties. He also talked about how he would bang women on rooftops, beaches, oh, office oh. desks, elevators, oh, and airplanes. Elevator. At the time, That's many considered an HIV diagnosis a death sentence after the virus progresses to AIDS. However, Magic had the means to assemble the best early. medical team, including Dr. Anthony Fauci, which has allowed the virus to remain dormant. Because of his good health, rumors have swirled that he was never actually infected and that it was only a ploy to get him to sit his ass down somewhere and stop tarnishing the NBA's image with his freaky sexual exploits. Even after he made his diagnosis public, the rest of the league wasn't too concerned about their own sexual health. The Washington Post reported that NBA players were still arranging to knock boots with women they barely knew. Shaquille O'Neal, who got drafted about a year after Magic was diagnosed, shrugged off a 1992 federal government estimate that one out of every 250 Americans had HIV. Shaq responded, one out of 250, that ain't bad, it's bad. But not that bad. What? Ninja, what? Doctors from the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health were called in to visit each NBA team to demonstrate proper condom use. And That's they urged players to be tested <laughs> for HIV. Day, Their pleas fell Sorry, on deaf bad, ears bad, when, in January 1993, what? four Portland Trailblazers picked up two 16-year-olds oh. and a 15-year-old in a Salt Lake City shopping no. mall. One of the 16-year-olds told the police she slept with four or five players in the team's hotel that same night. The other 16-year-old said she was intimate with three of the men. No criminal charges were filed after police wow. determined the sex was consensual. The entire incident was even more proof that athletes weren't taking Magic's health seriously and they felt invincible to acquiring the virus. The Showtime era brought us some of the most entertaining displays of athleticism, but the team's off-court freaky indulgences were the catalyst to not only the end of Showtime, but the demise of Magic's basketball career. Mm. If you enjoyed this video, let us know. Yikes. Oh my God, this was wild. I did not know any of this. I mean, for a second, I forgot he had HIV <laughs> until she started talking more about it. I was like, oh yeah, he, he do got HIV because I feel like he's had it for so long. And, you know, he's still alive and well, so it's just not something 
I think about whenever I just randomly see pictures of him or whatever, I forget that he was diagnosed with that. But yeah, this is how he was living. This is a lot. Like, what are you trying to prove? Like, I get some people have higher sex drive than others, but this just seems like it was incredibly excessive. Like, this was this was a lot. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're gonna watch, and I'll see y'all the next time. Bye.